Uh, up next this morning, our first panel discussion of the day, uh, the Digital Workspace panel will debate ways in which businesses can improve productivity and collaboration between staff, suppliers, and customers through the use of new online services. It's my great pleasure to invite to the stage, first of all, Kevin Ward, the editor of the South Wales Argus, who's going to be chairing this session. Uh, alongside him, panel members Jason Downs of uh, Pow Wow Now, Chris Griffiths of Drop Task, Joanna Swash from Moneypenny, and Alex Hilton from the Cloud Industry Forum. Would you give them a round of applause, please? Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Kevin Ward. I'm the editor of the South Wales Argus and the editor of southwellsargus.co.uk. Uh, I'm proud to say that we are the uh, official media partners of Digital 2015. Um, welcome to Newport. Uh, for those of you who are new to Newport, there are three things to remember. One is that we are a city on the rise. Uh, the second is that we are a super connected city. Uh, and the third one is the weather is always like it is today. Uh, we have five panel members today uh, who are going to be talking about uh, digital uh, in the workspace and in the workplace. Um, and, and what we're going to talk about is very much uh, how digital works uh, in an everyday uh, scenario uh, in the workplace uh, and what it can mean in terms of uh, improving uh, productivity, collaboration between staff uh, and customers. Uh, so we have uh, on our panel, uh, and, and they'll sort of wave to you when I, when I say their names, uh, Jason Downs, there we are, uh, Chris Griffiths, Joanna Swash, uh, Ant Morse, and Alex Hilton. Um, they have a microphone to share between them. Uh, and we're going to kick off by, uh, I'll ask uh, each of our panel members just to talk for two or three minutes about uh, uh, themselves and, and really why they're here. Um, I'll then try and fire a few questions um, at them. I won't make it too difficult. Uh, and then we'll open it up to the audience and hopefully there'll be plenty of questions uh, from you. Um, so can I ask uh, Joanna to kick off, please? Thank you. Um, good afternoon, yes. Um, I'm a director at Bunny Penny. We're based in Wrexham. Um, and we're a telephone answering and outsourced switchboard provider. We've got about 400 people now, um, and we're continually investing. Our growth is driven through investment in new digital um, ways of communicating. So our original business was built upon providing amazing people answering the telephone for lots of different companies. But we've moved on from there, and whilst that remains our core, um, we're always investing in things like voice recognition, um, different ways for our clients to communicate with us and with each other via apps. Um, really cool online portals which show heat maps of their calls and where they come from. And for us, the next thing is about video. So it's about enabling people to communicate by video. People aren't knocking our door down for that at the moment, but we really feel that that's the next thing. That's the next thing going to come to our marketplace. Thank you. And Chris? Uh, hello, I'm Chris Griffiths. I'm involved in a, a number of uh, tech startups. Uh, one of them, Drop Task, uh, has been uh, called one of the digital dozen at this event, which is fantastic. Um, uh, one of my other products, iMindMap, is a, is a digital thinking canvas that's being used by over a million, a million people. And um, my most recent project is um, Tech Marina. Tech Marina is going to be a 20,000 square foot um, tech hub based in, in Panath Marina. Uh, with a, a, a real focus on how we can produce a very creative and innovative workspace. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, Shall we move on to Ant? Thank you. I'm Ant Morse. I'm the head of digital sales at uh, SMB Midmarket and Partner Channel. Um, for me, we are seeing a substantial change in our business, both uh, internally, but also in, in customer services and what our customers need from us. Uh, this change really is coming at a pace that we've never quite seen before. Um, and it really is about understanding how it's changing the workplace in terms of our business. It's about understanding how it's changing uh, that of our customers as well. They come to us for communications and for technology, and it's about us understanding and making sure we get that. It's really dr uh, driven for me around the devices, around the ubiquity of internet connection, uh, and also social media. So we're very interested and keen uh, to understand more about how that can benefit our customers. 
Uh, thank you. And uh, Alex, please. I wasn't expecting to go next. Um, good afternoon. I'm Alex Hilton. I run an industry body called the Cloud Industry Forum. Um, it's not quite as dull as it sounds. The essence of it, though, really is representing the, the IT industry to a greater extent um, on this whole subject of cloud computing, which is very much at the forefront of where businesses and indeed hopefully um, many of us as consumers are now moving to is the adoption of cloud technology and the impact that has across businesses, across individuals, how people work, how they collaborate and so forth. So we produce research um, on behalf of our members. And our members include many of the big vendors who, who some of you you'll see here today, uh, the likes of Microsoft, HP, IBM, Adobe is a very long list of them. Um, and we work with them and they fund our activity. We very much remain an impartial, independent organization producing and delivering this research, some of which I'm happy to talk to you about today uh, to see where we see the cloud industry moving to, uh, where we see the trends are, and what indeed some of the challenges and inhibitors are. We also have a program for users, individual end users, uh, who can get involved and then they can consume a lot of the research and independent um, views of what's going on in the cloud industry as well. Uh, and last but not least, Jason. Hi there, I'm Jason Downs. I'm the Managing Director of Power Now, a conference call company based in Richmond. Um, founded 12 years ago and very proud now to be Europe's fastest growing conference call provider. And I guess the key, key things we've seen recently, and especially over the last two years, is how people are wanting to communicate in different technologies. Interesting, you talk about video, that's really a driving force now. Um, and also where people want to work in terms of their location um, and the times of day they even want to work. Uh, thank you, panel members. Um, let me start off uh, with a question about um, how technology has changed uh, your sector or your particular business. Um, uh, and I'm wondering how technology trends have impacted uh, on, on the office um, and, and what you think the biggest changes have been uh, perhaps over the last five years, years or so, or indeed what, what changes you're anticipating um, over the next uh, few years. So can we start with Chris on that one, please? Sure, um, it's quite a, quite a big question to answer that one. Um, I think in, in terms of how I've seen things change, I, I've, I've been an entrepreneur. I mean, I, I failed um, my computing uh, science A level uh, miserably. I got an unclassified, um, so I decided to set up a tech company, as you do. Um, and, you know, things have changed. Things have accelerated. For, as an entrepreneur in this field, it's a really exciting time. Um, you, you can create things so quickly now. Um, you, you don't need a lot of money to actually try and make an idea happen. You can collaborate with people to make ideas happen. So you can find the skills that you need when you need them. For, for me, working in the, the fields that I work in, which tends to be in, in creativity and innovation and providing software tools that help people think differently, um, I, I am really excited, but I'm also I also feel really challenged because technology is great and the work, workplace is changing in a, in a fantastic way, um, but people are starting to become so distracted by the technology that's there and they haven't been taught how to manage that technology that it's impacting on their ability to create and innovate. And as we just heard from, from Ian, you know, if we want to make a difference, we have to be innovators. Well, if you're switched on all the time because information is hitting you from every single angle, you're not being given time to think. So don't get me wrong, it, it's, it's a really positive place we're at now, but with some, some caution uh, in there as well. Uh, Jason, your view on the same question, please. I think it's interesting when you talk about the need to filter information. Um, there's a generation coming through that their first phone was an iPhone and all the communication, all the information that that came through. Um, so I actually think the new generation are just naturally far better equipped um, than probably great respect for us all here. Yeah, um, we are. Um, but I do, I think it's, it's technology will keep going and going and it's up to us to really engage with all, all areas and all sectors to understand how best to use it. Uh, Joanna, you've talked about video being the sort of next big thing in, 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 in your business. C can you tell us a little bit more about how that is going to impact on what you do? Um, I, th I think it's about the way that we, we communicate, and that's changed so dramatically in the, in the past recent years. Look at the fact that YouTube's only 10 years old, and now th th video is absolutely everywhere. So from our business, our traditional model was telephone calls. Um, we can see the 
call volume by individual companies now, it's going down slightly a year on year. They're moving to email um, and video conferencing, but um, video is going to be key. It's, it's all about providing that, um, the experience that you're sitting talking to somebody face to face. I know my kids, they are on FaceTime all the time. They don't phone my mom, you know, they FaceTime her. And as that generation grows up, then that's what we're going to see. Uh, Ant, I wonder from, from your point of view, that, that generational thing, I've, there's been a lot in, in the media over the last few weeks about the so-called Generation Y, the first sort of truly 21st century generation that will be coming into the workplace in the next sort of two to three years. How, how, do, how do we deal with that as it comes into the workplace? Yeah, <clears throat> Excuse me. It, yeah it's a very good point, and I think that's, that's something we're seeing, the different ways to communicate, the way that people now expect technology to work for them. Um, this generation have, have, have been brought up with the tools, you know, their first phone was an iPhone, they don't remember the Nokia 6110, you know, like we do. Um, they've, they have they expect the technology to be there and they expect it to be in the workplace. Um, they communicate very differently to us as well. You know, we, we have a, a couple of guys uh, in our place who really, you know, d detest email. They really don't want to be uh, held to a, a device that's churning email. However, you know, it's not that they don't want to be communicated with. They actually prefer um, the instant com communication, so the sort of WhatsApp, the link messaging, the instant messaging, um, and that presence-based system really does work very well. So they've got they've got different expectations. And, and, and Alex, from the from the cloud industry, if I can call it that, what um, uh, how is that changing uh, the workplace, and, and how do you envisage it continuing to do that? Well, I think we're still at the start of it, to be honest with you, even though it has been going a few years now, but it's, it's uh, a revolution or evolution. I guess you can view it either way there, but I mean, the essence around this is the changes are kicking in in a major way. I, I come from an age bracket whereby, you know, with my first job, people could smoke in the office and they'd go to the lunch, you know, for, to the pub for a couple of hours um, and work never went home with you. Uh, nowadays, we have a mobile workforce, you know, we're collaborative, we've probably all got our... Um, devices here, tablets, mobile phones, whatever they may be, people are tweeting, you know, so it's, it's a completely, it, it is a revolution, it has changed beyond recognition from, you know, the, the age group that my generation and my children, as with your children, you know, kind of coming through are adapting and changing, so they don't really care what the devices are so much anymore, they like them because they're cool and trendy and it has to be the latest whatever it happens to be, but actually it's the consumption of the service that's the key deliverable there. And that's why, you know, when we talk about a cloud technology world, and let's take this to a business environment as well as out of a consumer environment, is uh, everything is delivered as a service now. So it's this flexibility, it's this on-off capability, uh, all the scalability that brings. And actually, from a cloud perspective, which to answer your question directly, is where we see, you know, the whole IT business community going. And even take IT out of it, just the delivery of services within the business now, it's all about this kind of cost management capability. You pay as you go. We've been doing that for years with the mobile telephone market, and now suddenly we're doing it with the IT industry, and that's got to be good for, for businesses. Uh, and clearly the vendors who are driving that change are really getting behind that in a massive way, and they're betting their businesses on it as well. So it's here to stay. Okay, a couple of hours in the pub at lunchtime, something that's never happened in journalism, I'm lucky to say. Um, it's longer, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, Ant, how, how do you feel that technology, the changes in technology uh, within business, are they, are they driven by business themselves or are they driven by the consumer? No, they're, um, they're definitely driven by the consumer. And I think it's about this generation moving up with the, uh, the instant communication methods that they've got. Um, they're really looking to it from us. But it doesn't just stop there. So, you know, these are our employees. These, these are the people who are going to be the future of our business. But actually, it's our customers as well. So as they expect it to work for them internally in how they communicate, um, they also expect it as a consumer. And that's the thing, the two... Uh, the two elements are driving real change, and that's where I think the, you know, the pace of change in digital revolution is, uh, is gathering its momentum. Jason, we, we, we talk a lot about um, technology driving efficiency and, and productivity, and, and often uh, in various industries that means doing it with fewer people. Uh, is, is that how you see technology, or, or is, it, is it more important that, that the people are there as well? I think, um, you know, 
the UK and Wales and many main um, established European countries have thought, oh, okay, we're cut, cut our way to greatness. So a lot of the technology, technology was how to reduce costs in your business. Um, but that's clearly not the state to, to go forward. And it's actually now using the technology to grow a business. And ultimately, how can people be more, more productive? Um, and I go back to my first point in terms of getting people to be more flexible in where they work. So reducing the amount of time that is wasted traveling, um, reduce the amount of time people are needing to go turn up to a meeting. You can just connect. Um, and communicate and collaborate. And this is exactly what the Generation Y, or whatever we'd like to call it, does with their friends from, for the last five years. They literally, if they want to arrange somewhere to meet, they just quickly um, get on their, their, their device and ar chat away and arrange somewhere to meet. Um, so again, that generation, I would say, is leading the communication of, of today. Uh, Joanna, in your business, how, how do you roll out new technology? Is that based entirely, as we said just then, on, on the consumer demand, or is it, it's there, we should have it? Um, I think if you wait for demand, then someone else has got there first. Um, you've got to be pioneers in your industry, um, but that takes investment, which um, is, is difficult for many, many businesses. Um, no, I think it, it, it's a mix. It's about coming up with new ideas to solve problems that are already out there, but similarly taking existing technology and making it better and more appropriate for your marketplace. So, um, you know, j just improving things. We've got a voice recognition, and everybody's perception of voice recognition is, oh, you know, phone in the cinema and, you know, things like that. Um, and we've just taken that and, and mixed it with people so that you've got, um, you've got a, a, a solution that will just suit the... It, it's future-proof, really. Um, so, no, we don't, we don't wait around. We're investing all the time um, and roll out as and when we come up with things. But we never just make do. There's no point coming up with something, running out of money, and just making do. It's got to be right if you put it out there in the market. Okay. Well, I think that's probably enough from me in terms of questions. So, um, let's... Uh Put it out to you, to you in the audience. There are a couple of microphones uh, um, out there. If you can um, uh, put your hands up if you've got a question, wait for the microphone to come to you, uh, and then if you could uh, say uh, who you are and uh, where you're from, please. So do we have a question? Please don't be shy. Right down at the front here, lady at the front. Do we have a microphone? There we are, just on, the, on its way. Thanks. Um, Meg Ward, um, I'm a personal coach. Um, I'm just interested about flexible working. You've talked about the, the ability, you know, the possibilities for flexible working are obviously huge. Do you think employers are catching up and keeping up with the technology that's on offer to allow that to happen better more often? In, in, in the first instance, you're right, the technology is there now. Um, so you can instant message, you can see people, you can check are people working, you can communicate hugely effectively. And I actually think small businesses are once again leading the way because um, they're just not so worried about command and control. Um, so I'm seeing huge amount of growth in this area for the small business owners who are just getting on with it, um, which is very encouraging and refreshing. Yeah, can I, can I add to that? I mean, I, the stuff I've certainly seen through from an industry perspective, talking with you know, the industry, let's say the vendors out there, is certainly if you're, if you're a small business, uh, personally, I think you'd be daft to do anything else in terms of other than your, you adopt technology on a cloud basis. Why, why would you do anything else? Why would you go and spend you know, thousands of pounds buying a lot of expensive hardware kit that's gonna sit and depreciate quite quickly in an office? Um, so we, you know, we measure the adoption rates closely of what's going on in the UK industry and uh, the cloud technology is moving forward. And I think a lot of IT people have been cautious and reserved about that because the point was made earlier, they think it might be doing them out of a job in some way, but I think it's moving forward now and I think it's moving at pace. And certainly as we have drivers like Powerbound now, like any kind of, you know, um, kind of UC, you know, unified comms kind of approach, people are able to make their phone calls through their computer and do video conferencing, stuff like that. You, you adapt with it because businesses now see the benefits. It's cheaper. Why do that then? Get in a car and drive down the M4 or get on a flight. It's cheaper. And that's, that's got to be the driver. Joanna? There are 25% more home workers now than there was 20 years ago. And if you look at the trends, you know, the shift is incredible. And that's down to all the tools that you've got to work flexibly. 
um, and look like a bigger business. You don't necessarily, you know, if, you, if you're self-employed, you don't have to have the traditional office and you can be present anywhere. You don't have to be a local business wherever. You could have a Manchester address or a London telephone number. So you've got a lot more options. I think as well, just to, uh, to add to that, we talked about um, you know, big investment, I think, and software as a service and things as a service. I think workplace as a service will, will start, to, uh, start to be realized soon as well. Well, basically, it's kind of everything packaged um, as a pay-and-go model, and I think that's going to be quite an interesting opportunity. So regardless of the size of the organization, anybody could take a telephone system, a conference system, a video system, an email system, as they require it. This is going to be particularly strong and interesting for, uh, for SMB customers. I, I think you've got to have more flexible working because, um, especially in, the, in digital industries, because the world is, is getting a much smaller place now. So uh, I know with our business, probably 90% of all of our customers are overseas. So we have to have a measure of flexibility. But I think one of the key drivers for flexibility now is in recruiting and keeping good people. Um, you know, if you've got the option of working somewhere with, with some form of flexible working compared to somewhere else, it's not really a consideration you'd, you'd, you'd want to have. And, and also, just going back to a, a previous question about will the new workplace, the digital workplace, sort of cut um, the number of people that are required, I, I see it as a, as a positive because the more we can use technology to automate, um, the more freedom that we've got to do roles and jobs that are all about creativity. It's about creating something new. So the digital workplace is brilliant from that perspective because it means we don't have to do the things that computers can do much better than us. Thank you. I think, do we have a question right down at the front here? I think there's a microphone on its way to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you mind if I be cheeky and ask a couple of quick questions? Carry um, on. You mentioned that the phone volumes are going down. Um, are, are there any sort of increases on the digital front uh, to replace those phone calls? Um, it, it's those other methods of communicating, isn't it? It's back to the fact that people tend to be emailing more or they're instant messaging. Um, it, it's those kind of trends, really. Um, but there's no doubt that, well... If you look at yourself, how many phone calls would you have made 10 years ago and how many phone calls would you make now? Um, and as a business, we have to make sure that we future-proof our business to, to support businesses who want to communicate in a different way. Just, sorry, just to add to that as well, from a mobile network perspective, we're seeing very clear data of this, so, and it's nothing new. We've seen this trend of uh, voice traffic uh, depreciate and mobile, um, mobile data traffic increase uh, for a number of years. We're, we're now at a point where that, that trend has, has carried on, is firmly established now. And my second question, sorry. We've got an um, international uh, team spanning from Australia right across to America. So we, we kind of have a 24-hour department. We, we use a few online tools in the cloud uh, to manage tasks and to have a bit of interaction, but we often find that we're kind of overloaded sometimes. Question is, how do you best manage this, these distractions and actually get some work done? Um, I, I think that's, that's an absolute you know, million dollar question. It's one of the reasons why three years ago uh, I pulled together a, a team to start looking at productivity tools, um, which is where drop task has come from. Um, what, what we've done is taken a very visual approach to task management. So rather than having lots of lists that become overwhelming, we, we make it very fun and very engaging um, because it is a big issue. I mean, the more technology we use, um, the more overloaded we get with tasks, the more collaboration we have, the, the, the easier it is for people to ask us to do things. Um, emails were, were just creating this vicious circle of um, replying to everything and searching back through your emails. Um, so we need to do things to, to move away from that. And again, it's about being careful with the instant messaging and um, and with email management, you know, how, how, how many companies actually teach their, their, their teams to use it appropriately. Um, but it, it's, a, it, it's a really difficult one. And, and you know, with, with DropTask, it's a very early stage product. Um, we're not there yet, but we're, we've got some ideas and we're trying them all the time. Lots of them fail, but one of them is going to work hopefully over the next, uh, over the next year or two. I, I think, you know, one, one other comment in addition to that, which 
I'm not sure it will directly answer your question, but, but when we look back on the stuff now in terms of how you manage people and how you manage tasks, I think there's a lot of stuff that actually we've been doing in business for years and years anyway, uh, which is effectively management, managing people. And the way you effectively manage people, I think, in this now flexible technology world um, it is through effective obje objectives and effective management, performance-based management. It's about output. It's about delivery. Because you're right. I've worked with people, and I've probably been in that position myself, where you can spend your entire time being reactive. You're just doing email. You're just you know, dealing with all the rubbish that's coming in that you go, actually, this is just irrelevant. It's not moving things forward. So I very firmly believe, forget the cloud technology for a second, it's all about performance-based management, doing that effectively and appropriately. How many people now work from home on Fridays? How many people you know, are working in the evenings and so on? So the, the flexibility is there, but we have to be able to manage people appropriately to give them the right focus, I think. Thank you uh, for that. Um, we're going to have to wrap up uh, now because we're near enough at the end of our time, but uh, I think you'd agree it's been a, a fascinating um, discussion. Some of the things we learned uh, today are that uh, uh, you need to be innovators, uh, that video is everywhere, as are instant communications. Um, that you don't wait for demand, because if you do, somebody else will get there before you. Uh, the technology is out there for flexible working. Don't just make do with the technology you've got. The more we automate, the more freedom uh, our people have, um, and that the new generation coming into the workplace uh, wants to use the devices that it wants to use. Um, I'm sure you'd like to join me in thanking our, our panel, um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.